Hello there. How are you today? My name is Festus. I want to complete the lesson I started on the, the lessons from a Roman soldier. I hope part one blessed you so immensely. So great a revelation. Paul was comparing a physical soldier with a Christian, with a, with a Christian person. And when, in fact, the lesson is so deep. When you look at the life of a soldier, you see certain qualities that Christians should imbibe. And that's the lesson Paul presented to Timothy. Please, if you did not watch part one, check our YouTube uh, gallery, you see it. Check our online, you see it. This is going to be part two and it's going to be powerful. It's going to be brief. Let's go. Today, under that topic, as you see there, I am going to be discussing the court martial. You know, it's very important in the military. I told you that I, I come from a military background. So I use part of that little knowledge to make, paint a picture of who a Christian really is supposed to be. So today, look at the court martial. I know you have heard that before, court martial. When you hear that a soldier is going to be court martial, it means that he's going to face punishment for wrongdoing. As Christians, eh, God has provided a machinery to judge erring Christians, especially those that have, have gained certain level of maturity in the faith whom he has committed work into their hands as soldiers. I told you that God treats us like soldiers. Jesus is our, is our captain of salvation. I hope you know that appellation in scripture refers to Jesus, the captain of our salvation. is the captain that goes before us is the one we are pleasing, our commanding officer. If you watch part one, I laid down the principles very clearly. But in this particular topic, I'm going to look at the way God disciplines us as believers, as leaders, as Christian workers, as believers that have attained certain level of maturity. The way he disciplines us. The disciplinary machinery is what we want to look at. We look at the soldier, the military uh, discipline. Then we compare that to the Christian discipline. It's going to be great. Please, it's usually a short video. Watch this to the end. Revelations like this are not common. Now we are talking about the court martial. In the military... My granddad, both to my father's side and my mother's side, served the force for years and retired. My uncle served for years to the higher rank and also retired peacefully, just around 2019 or 2020, not quite long, not quite long ago. Now, I am going to show you how the erring officers are disciplined in the army. When I started, I mentioned that the army is a place where discipline is everything. And I was able to link it to the Christian life. That the Christian life, the only language that heaven understands in the Christian life is discipline. That is spiritual discipline. I was able to lay it out. Now, I'm not going to dwell on that, but I'm going to show you the machinery that has been set in motion to discipline unruly soldiers, soldiers that have decided to break the rule of engagement and to become disciplined by their conduct and lifestyle. Because nonsense is not usually tolerated in the military. You know, you just don't come and do whatever you like. You have been trained to obey the last order. You have been trained to follow the last rule and order. Your interest comes last. The interest of the command is first. In fact, as a matter of fact, you are trained to stand for the last order even to the point of death. Yes, it's as serious as that. So having laid that background, let me show you the, the sequence of discipline in the military. 
Now, when a, a, an officer errs, there are different levels of offenses, gra gra gravity of offenses. They all have different gravity of punishment as well. Now, um, the first one is that he will be, be court martial. He will be brought before a panel authority who will inquire into his disobedience, into his misconduct. That is like a court. It's not, they are not judging the usual court system. They have their own court. They have the panel that have been constituted by intelligent officers. Most of the officers understand law. In fact, law is their core subject. So they are, I will call, they are lawyers too, even though they are in military uniform. So they, 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 they bring that soldier. The first thing is, the first thing is that, uh, you see, I am using, I, I am so familiar with World War I and II. I'm a history student, especially of the war, and I've written a lot of books on that, on Amazon and Kobo. So I'm, I'm using the World War background. The moment you offend and you just do whatever you like and break the rule of engagement, at a point, you'll be recalled. You are no longer going to serve where you are. You will receive a letter that says that you have been recalled. Then you are going to the you are going to the high command, to your command. You are no longer going to continue to work. And when you get there, you will have to face a panel of inquiry, who who will inquire into the level of your misconduct. They are going to throw different questions at you. And by their intelligent questions, even if you try to lie, your lie won't hold. They eventually discover your misconduct. And by that, they will indict you that you are now guilty. Once you have been convicted, that you are guilty of what you have been charged or what they have they, they seen other soldiers have reported about you, then you are going to face it. You are going to face it. There are different levels of punishment based on the offenses committed. One, different levels of imprisonment. You might face imprisonment. Imprisonment could be life imprisonment or could be imprisonment in years, number of years. Yes, very important. Another one is you could face demotion. You might have climbed a higher rank. You might have been a higher ranking officer. You'll be brought low to a lower rank. It means that years of your service and efforts is wasted. Though they, you will still be a soldier, but you are no longer going to occupy that high rank. You are coming lower. It's going to be very painful. The another one is dismissal. Based on what you have done, for what you have done is very grievous. You will face outright dismissal. You will be asked to hand over everything within that every property of the command you are to hand over, including ammunition, your clothes, your ID card, everything that is not your own, you have to hand over and you have to leave the command. Dismissal. That one is the most disgraceful. Then, in fact, the most deadly is death penalty. That is when the offense is very grievous. When the offense threatens life. When he, he, the offense you committed has, a, has taken life, has affected the life of other soldiers or other officers, then you will go for it. Or civilians, you were, caught, you were caught for massacring civilians. You will be, you will be executed. And you know the language of execution is by bullet. If you study the Second World War. Second World War that ended in 1945. After the war, every erring soldier, every soldier that committed all sorts of atrocities thought they were going to go free, especially in Japan, where is mass where terrible atrocities were committed by soldiers, and other parts too, other countries too, they were all judged by this panel. And a lot of them were convicted. Some were sent to prison in years. Some were given life imprisonment. Some were executed. Life. They were they were shot to death by, after being convicted. 
based on the Geneva Convention or law that guides the, 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 the rule of and ethics of a soldier. That law still holds today. Even in war, there are laws that, that, that soldiers must follow. You can't just say because it's war, you do whatever you like. You will be brought to justice and you might face death penalty for it. A lot of erring soldiers, especially from the from, ja from Japan and other countries that erred by killing some civilians and murdering thousands of people, they face death penalty. They face death penalty in 1946, 46, 47. The, the justice continued for years after 1945. So that is the background of the court martial of the soldier, of, of the disciplinary life of a soldier. Can you see how, how severe it is? And Paul writing to Timothy says that every Christian is like a soldier. A, we call ourselves Christian soldier. And I said if you want to study deeply, because this video doesn't give me time to deal to deal in total into this subject go and read uh, the first and second timothy and that and all the other parts where uh, paul taught the christian life using the mode of the christ uh, of a soldier the mode of the roman soldier go and study it your life will never remain the same all those things you do around you play around you say you are a christian in fact by the time you read it your mentality will change and uh, that and those of you who are pastor and you are just joking, you say you are pastor, go and read it. Your pastoring will change. The way you handle people will change. The, a soldier is killed, more, uh, is punished with death for handling, for killing civilians and for not taking the lives of innocent people seriously. And so then, if a pastor calls himself a Christian soldier, look at the way some of them handle members of the congregation. Some of them have turned like wolves. They defile them. Do you think that your 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 commanding officer will spear you? As 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 a Christian soldier, you 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 messing people around. You messing your congregation around. Some of them you rape. Some of them you molest. Some of them you exploit. And you think that your commanding officer is a fool? Your commanding officer is Jesus. I've established this principle in my first video. Please go and watch it. Our commanding officer is Jesus and he's going to ask us how we treated the flocks he committed into our hands. The people, as much as you see from history, so just who, 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 who handled civilians anyhow, paid for it, even after 1945. They paid dearly for it. So I don't see any pastor escaping the court martial of our, of, our, of our commanding officer who have handled members recklessly, wickedly, exploitatively. I don't see them escaping that justice. Now, having laid out the life of a soldier in terms of a disciplinary life in the court martial, let me relate it to us today as Christian soldiers. Now, how does in the scriptures you know I, I don't when i come on my page i don't give my personal opinion you know me i i give the standard the standard measure that you find in scripture how does is there any discipline for christians is there any form of judgment for christians some teachers tell you that christians will not be judged <laughs> I, I laugh <laughs> Some some preacher teachers tell you that Christians will not be disciplined. I laugh. Their discipline is even more than that of the physical soldiers. I'm going to show you briefly. This video is not a long video. Now, let's run through it. God provided a disciplinary measure for mature Christian, Christian workers, pastors, general overseers, those that have come of knowledge. Those The moment you have received the engrafted Word of God, you see, and has it has started eating meat as Paul wrote it. You are now mature to a level <laughs> you will face discipline for everything you do. I'm telling you the fact. The law won't spare you. 
I'm going to show you the measures of discipline. Shabir, I've shown you that of the soldiers. There are different measures based on the offense committed. Now, the first measure of discipline for a, an erring soldier, Christian soldier, whether you're a pastor, general overseer, Christian worker, ordinary believer that's just a church member, but you are born again, there, 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 are, there are levels of discipline and justice that will catch up with you when you throw caution to the wind. One is church discipline. Church discipline. When you look at the letters of Paul, Paul laid it clearly that erring, erring believers need to be disciplined by church authority. In fact, that is, that, is, that, is, that is the most, that is the simplest authority that God has placed on earth to judge you, to judge me. But most people don't know this. They don't respect the church, especially when you listen to crazy bloggers who disrespect the church, who don't know that the greatest authority on earth is the church. I laugh at you. People like Antia Duni, they lack knowledge. They, they, they lack knowledge. If they have knowledge, they, they, they won't mess up with the church. I'm not saying that uh, those pastors we are condemning uh, represent the church. But when you throw, when, when you throw skirmish, when you throw blemish on the entire church, you don't know what you're doing. The greatest authority that Christ left on earth is the church. <coughs> Sorry. Now, when a believer is the softest and the av most available disciplinary uh, authority is the church. You be disciplined. If you a pastor, for instance, who is just doing anything he or she likes, should be disciplined. The church authority asks him or her to step down. Don't pastor again. For now, let's investigate the allegation of corruption, immorality, adultery that have been leveled against you. But today, is it obtainable? It is because believers have not learned this thing. That's why I am teaching it. There should be a disciplinary power, authority. It, it exists, but it's not understood. It should be disciplined. General Vasya can be disciplined. That's why in the church system, there is no Alpha and Omega. Even with the General Vasya, there are other authorities that can call the General Vasya to order, remove him from his position for the time being until the allegation leveled against him is investigated. And if he's found guilty, he will be suspended. He might be removed from that position forever. Look at the army. Look at the army disciplinary uh, levels are read out to you. You call yourself Christian soldier. Then that's who we are. Then if you believe you are a Christian soldier, then the discipline, the discipline of the soldier apply to you too in a way. So the church is having the authority that will question you, your action. Pastor, what the nonsense that pastor is doing, it'll be called to order. But whereby this is not operating, then there's a problem. That's a problem. Look, if you escape the church discipline, then the Lord himself will discipline you by himself. That is grievous. I rather want the church to discipline me than for the Lord to discipline me. If you reject the church's discipline, then the Lord will discipline you by himself. It's, it's going to be painful. It's, it's going to be painful. The Lord is not a gentle disciplinarian. He is a very harsh disciplinarian. So you better allow the church to discipline you. You see, all these one-man churches, why, why am I calling it one-man churches? One, any church that does not have, uh, uh, that does not constitute a body of authority, a body of, of leadership of different levels is one-man church. Usually a church is started by one man. Yes, every big church today, for instance, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, was started by one man, but it shouldn't remain at the level of one man. Praise God for, 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 for the church. But then it grows. It constitutes disciplinary authority. It constitutes different levels of authority. That's how the church should be. That's a picture of the early church. 
But this one we see today, there's one guy who says God has called him. Yes, it's possible God called him. But everything revolves around him. Is the general overseer, is the pastor, is the alpha and omega. No one calls him to order. He can molest women sexually, and the news is everywhere, but he still he still keep on preaching. That's an aberration. That's an aberration. When you don't have anyone that will call you to question it, you are riding on a roller coaster to hellfire. Big time, big time. But as a general, as the Alpha and Omega, you have a team that says, Sir, based on this, on this, and this, we are asking that you step down. Yes, sir. With all due respect, sir, until we investigate this allegation leveled against you concerning corruption and an infidelity. Let's, let's investigate it. This is God's church. It's true that God used you to found the church. But the church doesn't belong to you. The church belongs to Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ started this movement through you. Usually he will call a man. 